And uh, Luke 23 and uh, uh, verses, uh, verse 33, it says, well, let's just back up verse 27. Luke 23, verse 27. There followed him a great company of people and of women, which also bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus turning unto them said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourself and for your children. For, for behold, the days are coming in which they shall say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bear, and the paps that never gave suck. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. If they do these things in a green tree, what shall be done in the dry? And there were also two other malefactors led with him to be put to death. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him, the malefactors, one on the right hand and other on the left. Then said, Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They parted his raiment, cast lots. The people stood beholding, and the rulers also which, uh, with them derided him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he be the Christ, the chosen of God. Soldiers also mocked him, coming to him, and offering him vinegar, and said, If thou be king of the Jews, save thyself. And a superscription also was written over him in letters of Greek, Latin, Hebrew, this is the king of the Jews. Of course, it goes on and talks about the male factors. Well, let's read it. Verse 39, And one of the male factors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be the Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answered that rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? We indeed justly. For this man receiveth due reward of our deeds, but this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto him, Lord, when thou... Uh, remember me when thou comest in thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. That's just for to read. In verse 33 it talks about, And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him. I want to talk about what will you take from Calvary. What will you take from Calvary? Now everything in the Bible, the whole word of God, stems around Calvary. Everything from from the book of Genesis all the way through the book of Revelations. Everything points to Calvary. Things after that points back to Calvary. You know the story, the, you know the truth of the Scriptures. Everybody before Calvary died in faith that Christ would come and uh, uh, pay our sin debt, and they looked to that day in faith that Christ would come. That's why, that's why when Jesus come off the cross, and that's why when He resurrected, the Bible said in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 19, he ascended down the heart of the earth and preached to those who was in prison. He preached to those that had faith. The Bible said faith come by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. So he went and preached the Word unto them. And their faith was complete. And of course, you know, he took paradise back to heaven with him. And then since Calvary, we look back to Calvary, and my friend, uh, our, uh, and, and know that that's where Christ paid our sin debt. I know about you, I thank God for Calvary, don't you? Hadn't been for Calvary, we'd been in a mess. Hadn't been for Calvary, uh, we'd still been on our road to hell. Uh, there wasn't, no, we couldn't have done enough works. We couldn't have done enough, paid enough money. My friend, to merit salvation, thank God, it's a free gift. And uh, if there's anything you ought to get excited about, if anybody just speaks the word Calvary, you ought to be excited because that's where it all took place, and that's why we're saved, and that's why we're not going to hell, and that's why we get to get to go to heaven and to be with the Lord simply because of what Christ done at Calvary. Wrote this down, uh, the, the cross, it's the theme of the Bible. That's what I just talked about. All the way through the Bible, everything points to the cross. It's the hope of all hopes. No, there's no hope outside of Calvary. Uh, there's no hope whatsoever of, of life. There's no hope of eternity. There's no hope of sins being forgiven outside of Calvary. It's, it's the event of all events. There's never... I don't care what you've been to and what took place, there's never been an event took place like Calvary. Never has been one, never will be an event that took place like Calvary. It's a message of all messages. What kind of message could you tell, my friend, uh, outside of Calvary that'd be worth anything? Amen? It'd be materialistic or it would be uh, just something, a tale or something, but the greatest message that's ever been told is thank God that Jesus, my friend, uh, was crucified and buried Rose again the third day. No greater message than Calvary. Remember one preacher said one time, uh, a young preacher asked him, said, what do you do when you're sitting on the pew 
and you don't know what you're going to preach. And I've been there a few times, Brother James, but you're sitting there thinking, what am I going to do? And the old preacher looked at him and said, I just go up there and open the Bible, read a scripture, and head to Calvary. Amen. And it'll work every time. Amen. And so Calvary is the theme and the message of all. It's a song of all songs. I don't care what you're saying. If you eliminate Calvary in it, it ain't worth nothing. Amen. But them old songs at Calvary and different songs that sang, there's no greater song that's sung at Calvary. It's a transaction of all transactions. Never been a transaction took place like it did at Calvary. Amen. I tell you what, the greatest thing, you could tell all kinds of things that Jesus did and God has done and the creation and everything, but the greatest transaction that ever took place, thank God, is when Jesus took our sins and nailed them to the cross and thank God set us free. And uh, it's the battle of all battles. Never been a battle between the Satan and Christ. Like There's never another been another battle like that. And it goes on and talked about it. never been a victory, never been a praise. There's nothing that you can praise God any more for than Calvary. Amen. So he talks about Calvary. When you think about Calvary, uh, you talk about uh, you think about a, a God or a Christ that is it's, it's a place of submission. The Bible said in the book of Luke, chapter number 22, he became uh, obedient. He talks about my feeling we was on in the garden. Uh, the Bible said he, he said, "Not my will, but Thy will." be done. Philippians said he became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Uh, and Christ on Calvary submitted himself. Well, you'll have this or not, he did no sin, he could not sin, he never has sinned, he never will sin. If he could have sinned, my friend, uh, he would not have been our substitute. Uh, but he submitted himself, uh, my friend, for our sins, uh, my friend, that we might have life. Uh, and we talk about Calvary is uh, we see a suffering Savior. You can go over, my friend, in the book of Isaiah and talk and read about all the things that Christ did. And I'm just laying it out because i got four things I want to give you. But in the book of Isaiah, the Bible talks about he was despised and rejected, a man of sorrow, acquainted with grief. And, and my friend talks about he's borne our grief and carried our sorrows. And, and yet we did esteem, uh, esteem him stricken, smitten of God. He was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquity. And at Calvary, my friend, the greatest picture of suffering, I don't care what you suffer, what you go through, and you can say this is the hardest thing anybody ever faced, go to Calvary. Nobody's ever faced anything, suffered anything like Calvary. And the hard thing about it is he didn't deserve to suffer, but he suffered. He took my pain. He took my suffering. He took my sin at Calvary. Isn't that wonderful? And so he's a suffering Savior. Then you see he's a substituting Savior. Thank God he, he took my place. Amen. If you ever get over that, you've got problems. Amen. Uh, he, when, when you, I tell you what you do when you, when you read about Calvary and, uh, and you go and you open your Bible and you read about Calvary, do you good at once in a while. The closing of all the four Gospels uh, uh, talks about Calvary. It would be good to tell you to read that, and as you read that, put yourself uh, where Christ was. Put yourself when he slapped you. Amen. And he opened out his mouth. <laughs> Tell you what, I, I, I ain't got that for yet. Somebody slapped me, I, I, I couldn't hail it, amen. But he, they slapped him, bit him, uh, nasty upon him with their teeth, put a crown of thorns on him, beat his back. And my friend, you know, he never opened his word, mouth. You know why? He was not doing it for himself. He was doing it for us. He, he took our place, and I'm thankful for that tonight. And my friend, he was a surrendering Savior. He yielded up the ghost, uh, and my friend, become my friend, the sacrifice, the Lamb of God. John said, look yonder, behold, the Lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world. And so I could go on and on and on and talk about Calvary. But you know, I thought about this. If you want to flip your Bibles over to the book of John, uh, chapter 19, I'm going to show you something in, in chapter uh, 20, brother, John chapter 20. I, I want to show you things, but some things about here that some people took away from Calvary. Now, I know when we went to Calvary, thank God we got saved. Amen. Uh, if you didn't go to Calvary, you, uh, you didn't get born again. Amen. If all you got is a little works or a little church membership or, my friend, a little effort or something here or there, you didn't get nothing. Amen. There's a lot of people, a lot of people that signed a little card. Remember, the, in the, especially in the easy believism days, 
And we, I'm thank God, I'm glad we're through that. But we went through this easy belief, just sign a card, uh, just come up here and turn over a new leaf, you know, and, and uh, uh, make a commitment, join the church, and you're okay. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, my friend, it takes more. Uh, he said uh, Nicodemus was a Pharisee of the Pharisees and the ruler of the Jews. And he had all kind, he had he knew more about religion and Christianity than we do. But Jesus said, you must be born again. Amen. And so at Calvary is where we went. And we got born again. But you know what? There's a lot of people, Brother Slick. That's as far as they ever went. It's Calvary. Amen? Amen? But you know what? There's some things after Calvary that needs to take place in our life. It'd be like, it'd be like having a baby and taking that baby, take it upstairs and put it in the bedroom, put it in the baby bed, and say, okay, you're born now. You're alive. And uh, make it on your own. There's food in the refrigerator down there and and uh, there's a TV you can watch if you want to, and, and there's toys to play with. And I tell you what that baby's going to do, he's going to die, amen, because it can't help himself. And I tell you, when you get saved, that's just the birthplace, uh, but there's a life to live after that. Uh, and we get some things from Calvary, my friend, that more, there's more that comes from Calvary than just eternal life. Uh, there's a life in this world uh, that things are be bestowed upon us at Calvary. Let me give you to you, show you what I'm talking about. In the book of John, chapter number 20, you'll remember in the first few verses, in verse number 1, look at it, John 20, verse 1. He said, The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark in the sepulchre, and see if the stone are taken away from the sepulcher. She ran back, and she told Peter and the others. And you know the story. Peter and John, the other disciple, took off running up to the tomb. And the Bible said when they got there, John got there first. And, and then when Peter got there, he went in. And my friend, then the other disciple, John, went in. And the Bible said he believed. Uh, and then it said uh, in verse number 9, For as yet they knew not the Scriptures, that he must rise again from the dead. Ain't that amazing? God told him over and over and over he's going to rise again. And he gets all the way to Calvary. And he's done dead. And he's done crucified. And he's done rose. And they still don't believe, that, my friend, that he is going to rise again. <laughs> what well, that makes us kind of look bad, amen. <laughs> Uh, how many times we preach the same thing over and over and over and over, and we still get it, didn't get it, amen? But these disciples, they went back home, the Bible said. But in verse 11, it says, But Mary stood without the sepulcher, weeping as she wept. She stooped down and looked in the sepulcher, and, and she looks in there, and see if two angels in white sitting, and the one at the head, and the other with the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Say, she saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned back, uh, her, her turned herself back, and saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus said, Her woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if thou hast borne him thence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said unto her, Mary. And she turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. And Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, for I have not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father to my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene came and the sold disciples what she did. You know what? Mary took from Calvary. She took reassurance of who Christ really was. Amen. You know what? Uh, the world don't believe what we call Jesus. And the world don't believe in the Christ that we talk about. Uh, talking to a Catholic guy the other day, and uh, he, he was talking, and he said, What do you do? And I said, I'm a preacher. Uh, and he said, Well, I'm a Catholic. Uh, and I said, Well, I'm a born again Christian. Uh, and he said, I'm a Catholic. Uh, and he said, I don't believe nothing the priests say, uh, but I do go, I do uh, go offer and light a candle every day. Uh, and boy, that just uh, opened up the door for me, and I was about to blow up, wanting him to talk a little more. And finally, I just told him, uh, I said, You know what? You can go back and light all the candles you want, uh, but they'll not be no shorts. In that cow, in them candles, that you can buy and eat all the wafers you want to eat. That they ain't no assurance. But my friend Mary, she did not. Mary is the one, my friend, that had got touched. She had seven devils in her, and God had touched her, and my friend pulled those devils out and set her free. And from the point that.
point on, she followed the Lord. You can find her all the way through the scriptures. Jesus would be here, and he'd talk about Mary Magdalene. Now, let me just say this before you clear it up. There are six Marys in the Bible, and you better get them straight. Mary Magdalene, my friend, was not the mother of Christ. The mother of Christ did after, after John took her home. She never came back again, and you don't hear much out of her. But Mary Magdalene followed him all the way. Yeah. And my friend wondered. Uh, he said, uh, You know what's amazing? She said she believed it, Brother Slick, but the disciples didn't even believe it. Uh, he kept telling, I'm going to rise again. Uh, and the third day I'm going to rise. And she went back to the tomb uh, to make sure. And you know what? She was Maybe she had some doubt. I don't know. Uh, but when she got there, uh, she looked in and there was nobody there. Uh, and my friend, she said, They said, Where have you laid him? Uh, and my friend, Who are you seeking? And my friend, she left. And Jesus looked at her and said, Who's seeking you? And she said, I, 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 the him, we thought he would be him. And you know what he said? He said, Mary. And that's all it took uh, to give her that assurance uh, that he was the uh, The Bible said it said, touch him or not. <laughs> Well, James, I believe he came, when he said Mary, she realized who he was. I believe she headed to him. And I believe she was going to hug him or fall at his feet or whatever. You know what he said? Touch me not. You know what he said, Dad? He said, I ain't been down to, I ain't, I ain't been up and off my own blood yet. I've just come out of the tomb. And I'm getting up there. But he said, I'm going to ascend to my father, offer the blood, and then I'm coming back. Tell the disciples I'll be back. And she went running back with the assurance that she had seen the Lord. You know what? If you ever have doubt in your salvation, doubt in your Christian life, just go back to Calvary. Just go back to Calvary and get that assurance, that, my friend, that you're saved and that you're born again by the grace of God. That, you know, we, we ought to take away, my friend, the fact. I, I remember, I've told you this before, but I remember the, the, the illustration about the old guy that had a farm and had... And he got saved under an oak tree uh, out on the farm. Uh, and, and, and every time the devil would come around there once in a while and say, you ain't saved. Uh, you know what he'd do? He'd say, he said, all right, Mr. Devil, let's go. And he'd take him back over to that oak tree. And he'd say, Mr. Devil, you remember right here? Right here. Uh, I, my friend, I bowed. And I invited Jesus in my heart. Uh, and he saved me that day and the devil would be gone. Uh, a few days later, he said, the devil would come back. Uh, and said, he'd say, all right, let's go, Mr. Devil. Uh, and he'd take him back to that oak tree. Uh, after about three or four times, uh, my friend the devil come one morning he said hey Mr. Devil I ain't got time to fool will you you know the way the oak tree good as I do uh, just go down and help yourself uh, my friend I'm glad I'm gonna have to go back to where I got saved uh, I don't have to go back and say right here uh, thank God I know uh, that day I passed from death to the life I have the assurance uh, you know somebody can say somebody can say uh, uh, where'd you get married uh, I say well I got married in Newport Tennessee Calvary Baptist Church uh, 6 o'clock in my mind uh, goes right back to that place Place. Uh, where did you go into the army? Uh, and my friend, I can tell you exactly uh, where I got on that bus and left out. Uh, I can tell you the day I got back. Uh, and I'll tell you when I got saved. Uh, been 60-something years. Uh, and my friend, I know my, you can say, Brother James, Brother Mike, when did you get saved? Uh, my mind, I, I don't look and say, well, let me see. Let me try to think of it. Uh, no, my mind goes right back to that day. Uh, they got in the middle of a little cow's pasture at a long rock order. Uh, I bowed and invited the Lord Jesus in my heart. Uh, and my friend got saved. Uh, I don't know doubt that my friend I've done exactly what God said he said whosoever shall call the name of the Lord shall be saved and I've done that according to the word and according to the scripture and God save me I'm going to have the assurance I'm saved I'm heaven bound because I'm born again I have that assurance and Mary got assurance after Calvary not only did, in, in, in the same chapter not only did Mary get assurance a reassurance that, but my friend the disciples found peace look in John chapter number 20 and verse number 19 the same day that evening being the first day of the week when the doors were shut when the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews came Jesus and stood in the midst and said to them peace be unto you I mean these disciples were scared they didn't know what was going on it said over there it said over there in that, in that third, that they didn't even they hadn't believed yet they, they knew not the scriptures God hadn't revealed that to them and they was troubled you know, they, they might have been thinking, you know, that they, they come and got the Lord, they crucified him. We're one of his disciples. They, they may come get us. They, they may do the same for us. They, and they had troubled about that thing. They, and my friend, they, they had, and they met up and they got assembled in this upper room. And when they got in there, they shut the door. They shut the windows. I don't know, they may have locked them. I don't know. But I know one thing Jesus didn't open the door. 
Jesus didn't open the window. He just showed up. Guess what he said? Peace. <laughs> Peace be unto you. And he said, when he had so said, he showed them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they said unto the Lord. Then said Jesus to them, Peace be unto you. I'll tell you what, if you want to find peace, just go back to Calvary. Amen. And ever since I've been away from Calvary, I have peace that passes all understanding in my heart. Talked to a fellow the other day at Hardy's. I talked to him, and we was talking about being saved. And I sat over reading the Bible, and he come over and said, Preacher, what are you reading? And I, I told him where I was reading that. And this guy, said, he's, a, he's a wicked fellow. And, 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 and as far as I know, he's never been saved. And, you know, and the more I talked to him, and I got, he said, what are you reading about? I said, I'm reading about the coming of the Lord. And I quoted him verses over there in First Thessalonians chapter 4. I started quoting him verses to him. You know what? I, I, I seen his hands going like this. And he got all troubled. And I said, I, I said, I'm glad I'm saved. When he comes, I'm ready. I said, you ready? He said, well, I hope so. <laughs> I wasn't shaking a bit, brother. I had peace in my heart because of the Holy Ghost that lives within my soul. He brought peace. And that day that God saved me at Calvary, he spoke peace to my heart. And thank God that peace passes all understanding. You ask me why I'm happy. I'll tell you why. My sins are gone. And God has put the peace of God in my heart and in my life. I ain't never lost the sleep about being saved. <laughs> Amen. I ain't never got up in the middle of the night and woke Kay up. She said, what's wrong with you? I, I woke up a few nights, you know, white fight the Vietnam War. <laughs> and then trouble all messed up, you know. But I ain't never woke up. She said, what's wrong with you? I said, I don't know if I'm saved or not. I don't know if I'm going to heaven or not. Uh, I woke up a few times jumping out of bed hollering, hallelujah, Jesus. And come in there. Uh, you know, but, uh, but, but there's, you know what? There's peace. Uh, after Calvary, uh, hey, before you went to Calvary, you didn't have no peace. <laughs> You know, no peace. I mean, there's a rage and sea and storm inside of your heart. And more when you got into conviction, man, when you got into conviction, man, it was bad, But it? Uh, you, you say, preacher, I got, I got peace on the command. No, I didn't have no peace, and I was under conviction. Every time somebody blew a car, uh, car horn, I thought Jesus was coming. Uh, I thought the trumpet was blowing. And I mean, I was just troubled. I couldn't sleep. I, I made a pallet beside my daddy's bed. I told you that. I made a pallet beside my daddy's bed for two weeks, uh, thinking if he went, I could grab a hold of him. I, I was so miserable, I had no peace. Uh, but that day I went to Calvary, uh, and thank God confessing out of sinner he spoke peace to my soul and there's peace like a river that flows through my soul I'm glad I'm content I'm happy I'm happy and I'm peaceful because I've been born again where'd you get that peace preacher I got it at Calvary <laughs> I still got it today amen <laughs> disciples found peace then look uh, look over in the book of Luke chapter 24 right quick I'll be back to this chapter in just a minute but uh, over in Luke chapter 4 here's two more that left something with Calvary Luke 24, you remember the two on the road to mess? Luke chapter 24, and verse 13, uh, the Bible said, And behold, two of them were at the same day in the village called Emmaus, at which uh, from Jerusalem, about three score and furlongs, they talked about all the things which happened, and it came to pass that while they communed together, and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holden that they should not know him. And he said to them, What manner of communications are these that you have one to another as you walk and are sad? And one of them, whose name was Cleophas, answered and said, Art thou a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not known the things which are come to pass in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty indeed, word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and all the rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. We trusted that it had been he which had uh, uh, redeemed Israel. And besides all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made astonished, which were early the sepulcher. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen visions of angels which said that he was alive. And certain men of them went with us to the sepulcher and found it even as the women had said. And boy, look at what Jesus said. He said, All fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things, entered into his glory, and in beginning in Moses, wouldn't you like to have been here this day? And beginning in Moses, he and all the prophets, uh, he expounded unto them all the scriptures of things concerning himself. And they drew nigh to the village. Uh, and he says they constrained him. He went in with them. And in verse number 31, it says, And their eyes are open, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, Did not our hearts burn within us? Why he talked to us by the way? You know what they found from Calvary? Understanding. Uh, just to be honest with you. 
Probably some of you, when you got saved, you didn't know really what happened. <laughs> All you know is you got saved. Oh, you know, you trusted. I've talked to people before. They say, Preacher, I don't know. Hey, you know, I don't know. Uh, all I know is God saved. And, 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 and I was under conviction. And, and the preacher preached. And I seen myself going to hell. And I came down and trusted Christ. That, that's all I know. That's what, the, that's what that blind man said over there. Talking about the blind man a month ago. You know, they come around and said, It's confused. And, and then what was it? The mother said, Ask him. Uh, he's the vase. And he said, All I know is I once was blind, but now I see. He said, that's all I know. But you know, he found out a whole lot more. And you know what? When you first get saved, all you know, all you really know is you're under conviction. You're going to go into hell. And God showed you a way to get out of hell. And you trusted Christ. But why ain't it good? When you left Calvary, you started learning. Uh, my friend, what really took place? Uh, you started learning that Jesus was the one that took your place. Uh, you started you found it understanding what really took place at Calvary. And what's going on. And how the Holy Ghost comes in your life. And how the crisis comes in. Aren't you glad you find some understanding? Uh, and he, they left. They didn't know what was going on. All they knew was what somebody said. But thank God they saw him and heard him preach to them. And they found understanding of the scriptures. And they said, boy, did not our hearts burn with it. Hey, I remember the first when I first got saved, I was just eight years old. And I'd heard my daddy preach all my life and other preachers, some of the best preachers in the country. I'd heard him preach. And, of course, I was like any kid. It's lost sitting back there playing, you know. Of course, you didn't play much. In our day, you didn't play at church. Mothers reach over and take them two fingers like that and pinch you and twist you. You wouldn't bite to cut up. You didn't even move. Amen. And uh, now, you know, they just, you know, I, I, don't let me get on that. I'm trying to preach positive, you know. But you know, now, you know, they, you, I, I get tickled these people. My kid's three years old. I just can't do nothing with them. Woo! Lord had my daddy. <laughs> He'd have you sitting on the pew when you was two years old. Amen. We didn't even have nurseries back then. Mama was the nursery. Amen. She took you out and took care of you. Amen. And, uh, but, you know, uh, and, and I got saved just eight years old, and I didn't pay much attention. But when I got into conviction, when I got into conviction, and the Word of God was preached to me, and I saw myself lost, I, and I got saved, Brother Slick, but I didn't really understand everything. You say, well, you ought to understand everything when you got saved. Well, you didn't understand. You didn't understand everything when you got married, did you? You found out a whole lot since you got married. Don't look at her. <laughs> he turned around and looked at her. She ain't going to help you. <laughs> you didn't know nothing. You didn't know all that stuff. Slick, you didn't know everything when you first got married. You didn't know all that stuff. You might as well quit grinning. You didn't either. Amen. Uh, my friend, but you know what? You learn. You learn, my friend, that process. Uh, but remember when you first got saved? I remember mean, just a little boy been saved probably a year. And old brother Burnham Cape, brother Burnham Cape, dead in heaven now. He daddy had him come down and preach for me. All I know that I saved uh, and I wasn't going to hell. That's all I know. Uh, every time I had a testimony meeting, uh, I'd jump up and say, I'm saved. I ain't going to hell. So uh, that's all I had to say. Yeah. But I tell you that night, old brother Cape got talking about my friend when he gets saved. Uh, he got talking about how the Holy Ghost comes in your heart. Uh, how the Holy Ghost will guide you and lead you. Uh, man, I tell you, I come alive. Uh, I thought, you mean the Holy Ghost is living in my heart and he's there to guide me and the Holy Ghost is Christ himself. And boy, I say, I got excited. And then he got talking about now we're the sons of God. I thought, man, I didn't know that. Uh, and I began, boy, I tell you, before he got to, I was about 10 years old, uh, just a little boy sitting on the front seat behind my daddy. I punched in the ribs. I said, that's good, ain't it, daddy? Uh, he said, yeah, boy, that's good. Uh, I tell you what, at 10 years old, uh, I shouted my first night. I come out of that pew and shouting done a day and old brother Cape did later on a little father you say what was wrong I begin to know and understand what really happened to me <laughs> realize what happened had eternal life and had the Holy Ghost the word of God boy you know what they found understanding after Calvary then I tell you let me give you something else. and I, I gotta move it cause I got a little ways to go and I know what y'all keep me preaching long but anyway John look in John 20 again Mary found understanding, or found him, and disciples found peace. Two on the road to Emmaus, they found understanding. But look at Thomas in John chapter 20. The Bible said in John chapter 20, verse 24, But Thomas was one of the twelve, which is called Denimus, which was not with them. He, he missed it. I preached a message one time. It's a good message right here. If you boys if you feel, you can preach on this. It's a Sunday night. It's a Sunday night service when Jesus showed up. It's Sunday night when Jesus showed up for the disciples. And Thomas wasn't there. I preached on what you missed for not coming on Sunday night. <laughs> they missed the Lord. They missed seeing Him. They missed His words. They missed the, 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 they missed the uh, pronouncement of peace on their hearts. 
And Thomas said in verse 25, The other disciple therefore said to him, We've seen the Lord. <laughs> you ever have one of them Holy Ghost services? Somebody here, when you see them, <laughs> you say, Boy, we saw the Lord. We had a hallelujah time Sunday. They'll look at you like, Did you? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You go to some church and it breaks out. You go try to tell it. You just can't tell it. You just have to one of them things. You just have to say, You'd have to have been there. <laughs> You just had to been there to see it and been there to believe it. I, Brother Doug's told me that several times. He talked, he said, he said, boy, we had a we had a good service Sunday. And I said, what happened? <laughs> and they look at you like you just had to been there. <laughs> they can't even tell you what happened. I mean, you know, you you, you know what I'm talking about. And and Thomas missed it. He said, we've seen the Lord, but he said to them, except I see his hands and the nail prints of his hand. And, the, and they missed it. He done showed them others the prints of the nails, the prints of his finger, and put his finger in the prints of the nails, and thrust my hand aside. I'll not believe. And after eight days, again, disciples were within, were within, and Thomas was with them. Then came Jesus to the door being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be on you. Then they said to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold thy hands. Reach hither thy hands, and thrust it. And Thomas said, My Lord! And my God, huh? he found faith. His faith was complete. He said, I ain't going to believe it. He didn't even touch it. He said, second, I put my hand in there. And you know what? When he saw it, those nails, he said, my Lord and my God. He found faith. Amen? At Calvary. You know what our faith comes from? Calvary. Amen? And so, so Mary and these disciples and these few, they found real church. When Calvary was over, they got real church. If you're doubting anything, go back to Calvary. You got to be careful now. <laughs> you go back to Calvary, you might really find out you didn't really get saved. <laughs> There's a lot of people that was hanging around Calvary that didn't get saved. Somebody said, Everybody goes to Calvary, get saved. No, a lot of them soldiers was there. They heard everything he had to say. They didn't get it. Judas followed him all them years. And he didn't get saved. Amen. And I tell you what, you better be careful. Go back to Calvary and see if you really got born again. By the grace of God. Amen. Come on now, help me out. Then let me look at let me show you something else. Not only did these find reassurance, but John, in the book of John, chapter number 19, John, the disciple Jesus loved, after Cal at Calvary, you know what he found? Responsibility. He looked in John chapter 19 and uh, verses uh, verse number 25. It says, Therefore there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother. Now Jesus is on the cross. He's dying for my sin. He's had all the pain and all the suffering laid upon him. And he looks down from the cross and he sees Mary and uh, his mother. And Jesus saw his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Cleopas. And guess what? There's Mary Magdalene still hanging around. And when Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, talking about John, he said unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then said he to the disciple, talking about John, Behold thy mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her unto his own home. You know what John left with Calvary? Not only he left with being redeemed, uh, my friend, looking at a redeemer, but he left with the responsibility of taking care of Jesus' his mother. And the Bible said from that time, he took her home, took care of Jesus' his mother. Boy, wasn't like that that job. He took care of Jesus' his mother. Till she died. Amen. He said, Mom, there's your new son. John, there's your new mama. And he left with responsibility from Calvary. He left taking care of her. The disciples in John 20, flip back over to John 20 and verse number 21. And Jesus, after he comes, showed himself. They glad when they saw the Lord. Look at verse 21 of John 20. Then said Jesus to them, Peace be unto you. Watch this. As my Father hath sent me, even so I send you. And when he had thus said thus, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Ghost. They left from Calvary. They left from that point with responsibility. You remember what the Bible said? Jesus said, I'm going to die. I'm going to Calvary. He said, But you go down to Jerusalem and you tarry, you be endued with power from high. Amen. And then he said, when you go down there and you're getting due to power from high, guess what? He said, you're to go off and bear witness and be witnesses for me. You're to go in all the world and preach the gospel. Amen? He said, as my Father sent me, so send I you. In other words, he said, you can rejoice around Calvary like some of them did, but when it all settles down, you have a responsibility. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. 
It means you have the responsibility of going and telling others about Christ. In fact, he said over, he talks about when you be endued with power from on high. And if you go over in the book of Acts, the Bible said, you, you know these verses as good as I do. In the book of Acts chapter number 1, where he talks about uh, uh, Jesus. Uh, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, in Judea, and Samaria, and the outermost parts of the world. If you broke, if you broke that down, if you broke that down, my friend, Jerusalem was a place. My uh, uh, Samaria was a place of, of danger. Jerusalem was a place that was despised. And my friend, listen, uh, uh, Judea was a place of discouragement. And my friend, the outermost parts of the world was a place of distance. Uh, no, no, uh, limited distance. How far you're to go to witness and tell somebody about Christ? And if you look at Jerusalem, the middle letters, the middle letters is USA. We're to go to the USA as much as the foreign field. And my friend, when you leave Calvary, you bear the responsibility of telling others about Christ. <laughs> they say, well, a preacher ought to go witness. Well, the Bible said you go witness. I preached another day, message of the day about sheep. <laughs> and it's talking about building churches and everything. I said, you know shepherds never do produce sheep. Sheep produce sheep. Amen. And the Bible said, we who us are sheep of his pasture. We're sheep. We're to produce other sheep. Come on now. That died like a, like a hammer. Huh? <laughs> we're, if you ever produced another sheep, you ever, ever want anybody to Christ, wouldn't it be bad to get to Calvary and leave Calvary and live a life and get to heaven and look at Christ and he said, no one, no one there's accountable that you want to Christ. Huh? You know what? You know what's wrong with us? We're like, uh, where is it, Luke 15, when the starts out and it said that, 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 that they had 100 sheep. And he lost one, he had 99. He could have been, you know, that shepherd could have just been content. So, well, at least I got 99. I still got 99. I won't hurt to lose one. What's it matter about that one? I got 99. You know what, I'm afraid that's where we are today. We're just content with what we have. Well, we got a pretty good crowd, pretty good finances. We like everybody. We got people that, in, uh, and watch this. That sheep was in the flock. But he got out. How many people has been in our church, part of our church, and they got out? We said, well, we didn't need them anyway. Hope it don't ever come back. <laughs> come on now. <laughs> we'll just be content with what we got. We don't need them anyway. We got plenty. And I'll tell you what, he's willing to go after the one. Can you imagine the terrain he had to go through? No doubt down the hills, up the rocky sides, down the valleys, through the thickets and everything else. And he, he was willing and he loved so much love for that one. He felt the responsibility. That's one of my sheep. I need to go get it. God left us responsibility to go. I tell you what, people that leave us, it ought to be our responsibility to go and do what we can to compel them to come back and get right and get back in the house of God. Must let's go and try to tell the lost that's never been saved about Christ. Amen. Come on now, help me out. <laughs> uh, I, hey, hey, it, it, it just ain't you, church folks. I hear a lot of preachers that both God, I didn't need them. I'm glad to go. Huh? That'd be about my like my boy leaving home. That's why I'm glad he's gone. I don't care where he, what he's done. I ain't glad he's gone. Amen. Break my heart if he's gone. I'd be doing everything in the world I could to get him back. Sometimes we got that attitude, well, we'll just have a meeting with what we got. What about that one that tripped up? What about that one that was led astray? Jesus said the responsibility is go and tell. The responsibility. Well, hey, and you know <laughs> Not only to tell with your mouth, to tell with your life. The Bible said we're, this ain't even in there, <laughs> but we're living in pistols and red. The way you live, the way you act on the job, the way you live in your neighborhood, the way you dress. Somebody said, oh, it don't matter how you dress, it don't matter how you live, it don't matter. It does matter. Man looketh on the outward appearance, God looks on the heart. What that means is if man sees God, he'll see it on the outside of you 
If God sees God, he'll sit on the inside. It does matter what the world says. I got a friend of mine owns a car lot at home. And uh, I've always liked to play with cars and fiddle with them. And, and uh, Christian tells me all the time, every time you come here, you've got to play with cars. But I've always liked to play with cars. I just always have. And make a little on it, you know. Get another one. And I go pick up cars. This guy, he, he if I'm home, he'll, he'll call me. He said, Put you home? And I said, Yeah. He said, Well, uh, I got one yesterday. He said, I got a car down in Henderson. He said, Can you, somebody go get them? We'll go there and get them and come back. I had a new guy yesterday. New guy. I never met him. I never had met him before. And he was going with me. And, and when he came over there, uh, that guy introduced me. He said, This is the preacher. <laughs> we got in the car and he said, Preacher, you got a name? <laughs> I said, Yeah. Preacher, I said, that's what all those guys call me over there. I said, my name's Mike Goodson, but they all call me. He said, well, I'm going to put my number, your phone number in here uh, in case we get uh, broke up when he, he was going to drive the car back, uh, and I'd drive the one we took down there, and he said, in case we get in traffic and everything, I, I'd like to have your phone number. I said, okay. And he, he got it all ready. He said, what's your number? And he put his number in there. He said, what's your name? I said, Preacher. He put Preacher in there. <laughs> and he got going down the road, and and we got talking about different things and everything. And, and he, he cussed a little bit and never said a word about him, too. I didn't jump on him. Rode on home, you know what? We got back up there, and I told the guy, I said, uh, told that guy that owns the lot, I said, I got to go. I took off. That guy hung around. And, and, and before I left this morning, I went by there. And you know what that guy that owns the lot told me? He said, he said, that guy said, you know what? He said, I believe that guy is a preacher. He said, I cussed. He never jumped on me. That he did tell me. One time that Jesus loved me. <laughs> Amen. You say, hey, I could have jumped on him and ruined our relationship. Amen. Yeah. You don't go to just choke somebody out with it. Sometimes your life, just your life. Yeah. Amen. Just your life is a testimony to them. That there's something different about you. Right. You get to work, you don't blow up like everybody else blows up. You don't tell stuff like everybody else tells. And you look a little different, my friend. And you look like a lady. And you look like a man. My friend, they look, they say something different about this person. And they'll be inquired about it. And next thing you know, you can tell them, I'm a child of God. I'm not what I used to be. I've been to Calvary. <laughs> I've been to Calvary. I've been born again. Uh, so they, they took responsibility to go. And my friend, and look, look at something else. Look at this, and I'll be, I'll be through in just a second. Over there, uh, back in the book of Luke, uh, chapter 23, we'll flip back over there. Mary found reassurance, and the disciples, and the mass, they found reassurance. Anytime there's doubt in your life, go to Calvary. They found responsibility at Calvary. There's more to this thing than it's being saved. It's like being married. More to this thing, just coming down here and saying a few vows and get a certificate, I'm married. <laughs> you don't believe it, try it. There's a lot of responsibilities. And they told me when I got married, everybody said, oh, you might as well go ahead and get married. They said, two can live cheap as one. I found out it wasn't right the first time we went out to eat. I thought, man, somebody has lied to me. <laughs> first time I took clothes to the laundry or to the, what do you call that thing, uh, net? Or, lo, I know, the cleaners. Cleaners, is that what y'all call them up here? First time I took some clothes to the cleaners, it's double. Uh, <laughs> I found out right quick there's more to this thing. Just, you know. <laughs> Come on now. I ain't, I ain't fussing about that. I love it. Amen. Uh, okay, okay, hey, we've learned a lot. When we left here, Sister Ned, you get on, Kate, okay, when, when you see her. We left here, went on anniversary, had her on our little anniversary trip out through yonder, and we stopped this nice little place to eat. And, and Kate said, I'm going to buy you supper for our anniversary. I said, well, you don't have to do that. I said, I always pay. She said, no, I'm going to buy you supper for anniversary. And I said, well, okay. We got in there and ordered. She said, order anything you want. And I ordered what I wanted. She got hers and she phoned around in a few minutes. She said, I left my pocketbook in the car. <laughs> I said, well, it wasn't that convenient. She said, I'll pay you back. And I paid it and there ain't never been no back. <laughs> huh? you, say, you say, you're crazy, preacher. No, she learned how to wiggle out of that. <laughs> you learn a lot when you get married. Don't, 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 don't cut that out if you can. Amen. Uh, I'm sorry, honey. She's listening. She's supposed to be listening now. I'm sorry. Amen. Uh, 
See what he said, preacher? Uh, there's more to this thing than just getting married and running around with a certificate I'm married and more to this thing than just saying I'm saved and running around with a certificate I got saved. Uh, there's a life to live and a responsibility to bear. Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go through it? Uh, no, there's a cross uh, for everyone. Uh, and there's a cross uh, for you and me. There's responsibility. Well, look, look in Luke chapter 23. Luke chapter 23. This is the first time I've preached this so let me get it as I can. Amen. Luke chapter 23, look at it, verse 39. By said, one of the male factors which were, which were had rained, railed on him, if thou be the Christ, save thyself and us. And the other answered and said, dost thou not fear God, seeing thou art the same come, come damnation? We indeed justly, for we receive due reward of our deeds. This man done nothing amiss. And you remember what he said? Lord, remember me when I was coming to the kingdom. Jesus said, today thou shalt be me in paradise. We'll just say the thief on the right. He found reservations at Calvary. <laughs> he said, Lord, remember me when you come to the kingdom. And Jesus said, Today. <laughs> Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. When he got to Calvary, he said, It's done nothing, miss. He's a just man. We're unjust. If you read that and just plead it slowly, he's confessing who he is. He's just an old unjust sinner. He said, Lord, remember me. <laughs> and he kind of came to Jesus and said, today. You know what? That, more, that point right there, he made reservations in another world. <laughs> of, course, of course, he had to stop off at paradise. <laughs> when Jesus, was, <laughs> when Je you know, when they died at that time, they went to paradise. And when Jesus said, remember today, thou will be me in paradise. So that's when Jesus gave up the ghost. And my friend, he went off his own blood, came back. You know what? He went down into the heart of the earth. And preached to those in uh, the spirits that was in prison. That's those that believed. See, paradise was here and hell was here, great guff. And my friend, he preached to those that was in prison. Preached to those that was in paradise and, and, and completed their faith and he led them out of there. And guess who was with him? Thief on the cross. Where'd they go from there? The Bible says, send it to the right hand of the Father and sit down. And he, he transferred from that point right into heaven. <laughs> that day I got saved, the eight year old boy, I made a reservation. I ain't got to use them yet, but they're there. Amen? They ain't, they ain't never wavered. My name's written up there. Book of life. Go up One of these days, I may transfer out of here full on. My wife tells me to quit saying that. But I may transfer out of here full long. You know what? When I get there, my name be in that book. <laughs> Somebody said, he'll look up your name. Hey, he knows whose name's in there. <laughs> he don't have to look it up. He'll just say, come on in. It'd be like me and Brother James having a party at my house. Brother James comes. I go over and say, well, let me look up and see if you're on the list. I know who he is. And Jesus knows who we are. <laughs> Amen. And I made reservations. I made reservations. You know, I thought about Stephen in my friend Acts chapter 7. When he trusted Christ, he made reservations. And after he preached, they stoned him. And guess what? He looked up and said, hey, get this over with. I see Jesus standing up. Welcome me. <laughs> Acts chapter 9, my Paul made reservations. In Acts chapter 9, he made reservations. He had to go through some jails, write some books and everything else. But to come a time, he said, hey, I'm ready to depart. My time's at hand. I'm fixing to fulfill my reservations. <laughs> I drove up here today and had reservations. Well, this is, this is going to work out perfect. This is going to work out perfect. Says, Tammy, you ain't going to believe it. I called yesterday. I called yesterday. I was telling Miss, Miss Annette about it. I called yesterday. I decided I'd just drive up here and drive back home. Now. Brother Doug had just sent me a thing. He said, I got your reservations. And he always does that. He said, I got your reservations over at Tall End. And so and so. And give me a confirmation number. I don't never remember the confirmation number. I just go in there and they know who I am over there. Say so many times. But I called. I told Kelly, I said, I'll be able to just drive home. She got an appointment in the morning about 9 something. I said, I think I'll just drive home. I said, I can be home at midnight. And I said, I'll just drive home. We'll get up. And I'll, t I'll go with you, the doctor. And then we can eat lunch. And uh, so I tried to call up here yesterday morning. And I told that little girl, I said, ma'am, I'd like to cancel reservations. I said, I got reservations. Mike Gutson, maybe in Doug Forster's name, maybe in Emmanuel Baptist Church. I said, I don't know who it's in. And she finally found them. She said, oh, said, we can't cancel them. Said, said they done been charged. I said, ma'am done this all my life. They don't charge nothing. If I'm wrong, tell me, you tell me. But I said, they don't charge nothing until you check in. And she said, well, I'm sorry. I said, you mean, you mean if I don't show up, you're still going to charge the church? 
And she said, that's right. I wish I could have reached through that phone. I just like to reach through there and shook her a little bit. <laughs> you know, you would not have Don't tell me you wouldn't have done it. I was aggravated. I thought, this ain't never. I finally said, just forget it. I'll just stay. So I told Kessler, here's the reason I need to stay. So I said, I'm going to stay. But, when I, but you know what? I like to think about that just now. I couldn't get out of any reservations. And there ain't no way I can get out of that reservation. Yeah. I'm <laughs> Done been paid for. <laughs> my name's wrote down. It's an eternal, eternal reservation. And when I get there, guess what? I done got a seat at the Lord's Supper. I done got a seat at the table at the marriage supper. <laughs> I got a seat reserved. My name's on it. And they can't eat till I get there. I ain't got a thing to do with this message. <laughs> but my reservations are permanent reservations. Amen. <laughs> and so he made reservations. Let me close. I found these made, found reassurance, responsibility. They found reservations. But look at that other thief, the thief on the, on the left. He was there. He seen the same Savior. He seen the same uh, beatings and bruises and all the things that Christ had went through. He had the same opportunity. But he said, save thyself and us. He wasn't willing to get saved. He didn't want to go to heaven. All he wanted to do was get off the cross and go back to his thieving and murdering, all the stuff he's doing. You know what he found after Calvary? Regret. He found regret. When that thief got to heaven, hell, he regretted. But he didn't listen. He trust Christ. Don't you know when he got to hell, he remembered that Jesus turned to that other one and said, today, Thou, you, be me. Paradise. Don't you know that echoes? Don't you know that echoes in his ear in hell? If I'd have just believed him. And he, re he found regret. He could have he could have made the same reservations. He could have made the same found the faint, same peace. He could have found the same understanding at Calvary that he did. But he regretted it because he rejected it. You know what, my friend? If you reject Calvary, one of these days you'll find regret. I thought about the Luke 16. I thought about the rich man. He regretted he didn't listen to that witness of that of Lazarus. Laid at his gate. I don't think he just laid over our begging. Amen. You know, I was thinking about this. There ain't no reason for no bums no more. Help signs is everywhere. Me and Kate went to North Carolina last week and meet him. We pulled up to the end of the road. I had a funeral over there. I had to go over and bury one of, one of my best friends. And we pulled up there to the stop sign and there was a McDonald's right there, and the guy standing right there beside the stop sign, and he had a he had a sign up, "Will work, hungry." Started to do the window. He said, "What are you doing?" I'm fixing to tell him that sign on McDonald's says "Help Wanted." I said, "Don't you roll that window down?" <laughs> huh? I said, "They." I know men case crazy anyway. She said, he may have a gun and shoot you. I said, you're supposed to have one shoot him first. <laughs> we'll just have fun. I'm not okay. But you know what? I looked at that and I thought, how dumb. You know what I wanted to tell him? You may know how to write a sign, but you can't read one. If you're hungry, there's a job. Huh? Come on now, help me out. Our McDonald's at home offered $3,000 cash bonus. If you'd come work three months. I told, him, I told him the other day, I know the manager, and I said, you get any takers? He said, not a one. <laughs> I thought, man, I'd tough it out for three months, get $3,000. Amen? Come on. Not a one. Nobody. Arby's has got to sign home. Hire anybody to show up. <laughs> I said, when they cut all this free stuff off, somebody's going to regret. It didn't work. Amen? That rich man. That little old poor, poor lad was laying there, and the dogs come and licked his soul. I believe personally he was, he told him he's saved because he went to heaven. I believe par he went to paradise. I believe personally he he told him about Christ. I believe when he got to hell he regretted. You say how do you know? Because when he got to hell, the rich man said, "Send Lazarus." Amen. Send Lazarus. He may dip the tip of the thing in water. Send Lazarus. Then he may go tell my brother what he told me. 
He regretted he didn't listen. He regretted he didn't answer. Rich fool regretted he trusted in riches. Amen. Me and Jimmy Ball, a friend of mine, back in back in the back in the seventies, early seventies, I guess it was. Uh, we was a member. Me and Kate was a member of the of Gilead Baptist or not Gilead Baptist Church, Calvary Baptist Church in Newport. And we had a visitation on Thursday night. Every Thursday night, every Thursday night, we'd go and visit this man, laying in the bed, flat on his back, couldn't get up. We'd go tell him about Christ. Every Thursday night, we'd go tell him about Christ. Months, every Thursday night, we made a visit to him, told him about Jesus. He'd run us off, cuss us, tell us never to come back. Every Thursday night, we'd go tell him about Christ. Never even, never even come close to paying any attention. One Thursday night, we got through a visitation. We always made him the last one. Brother Jimmy said, what do you think? You want to go back over there? I said, well, I said, I'm kind of tired and everything. And I said, it's late. And I said, I, 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 we'll just skip it. And he ain't going to pay no attention to us anyway. I'm just telling you what I said. I said, we'll go next time. About 11 o'clock that night, my phone rung. Place said, is this preacher Goodson? I said, yes, ma'am. He said, you're the one that's been coming to my daddy's house and witnessing and telling about Jesus on Thursday night. I said, yes, ma'am. He said, well, daddy's dying. He said, the, the, the nurses and stuff over here said, could you come? And I called Brother Jimmy, and I said, Brother Jimmy, we better go. Only night we missed. I said, we better go. We jumped in the car and went over her. He's laying in the bed. Never will forget this. I hear it. I still hear it. You'd see my feet's on fire. My feet's on fire. He said, my legs is on fire. He's screaming. You could hear him two blocks. My legs is on fire. My stomach's on fire. And the flames of the hell is coming right up. Got all the way up. My chest, my arms. Said, my head, my body's on fire. He's dying. I thought to myself, Brother Jimmy, you could have just went one more time. I live with that. But just went one more time. And I'm going to tell you, you may not get another time. Come trust Christ. This may be today is the day of salvation. This may be your day. And you know what? You may not never get another time to go tell that loving that's on your heart. Somebody said, well, I done told them all the time. I'm just going to let it go. Let God work. You better just keep going telling. Keep telling. My oldest son, my oldest son, I don't think he's saved and and uh, I tried to talk to him some, and he, he kind of, the other day was over there, and he had COVID. Just Ned, he had COVID, he thought he was going to die. He thought he was going to die. He told his wife, I said, I ain't going to make it. I mean, he had a little, little short breath, and finally ended up taking hospital, said, giving that uh, quick fuse and stuff. They stick him in the stomach, saw it. He thought he was going to die. And he got better. And they helped him, he's getting better, still weak. Over, I was over and he come by and I said son I said I just want to tell you one more time I said I want to tell you one more time Jesus loved you Jesus died for you just like he did me and he stood there for the first time he stood there he listened tears well up in his eyes he listened he didn't get saved but he listened I'm tell you what you, you, you regret when you get to the great white throne judgment and you see your loved ones come up before the great white throne and go to hell. You'll regret it. And if you're lost tonight and you don't trust Christ, you'll regret it when you lift your eyes to heaven. Amen. Brother asked me the other day, he said, Preacher, what do you think this world's coming to? I said, it's coming to Jesus. He said, what do you mean? I said, all the saved people, they're going to the, great, to the, to the judgment seat of Christ. Guess who's going to be the judge? Jesus. I said, we're going in there on into heaven. We're going to marry him. We're going to be with him forever. And the lost world, you know where they're going? They're going to the great right throne judgment. Guess who's going to be the judge? Jesus. He'll say, I never knew you. And they'll depart from Jesus. But all of us is going to face him on that day. Amen. Amen. Let's stand. I'm through, Brother Jim. If you enjoyed today's broadcast, head on over to your app store and download the IBC Florence app today where we have our music, sermons, videos, devotions, and much more. And as always, thanks for listening.